Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Joshua Rado and your co-host. If you are new to this work, please start with episode one. Intermediate students can start with episode 98 and advanced students can start with episode 200. Now with me as always to share her insights and her wisdom is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Kelly, what is going on today? Oh, well, today is not about me. Today is all about you because you are going on a paranormal investigation tonight. So I want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, going on. so, you know, it's we have a group of people that me and uh, Cassie have been teaching to in uh, our Healing with the Chakras class. And this group of paranormal investigators was really divinely led to us last October. And we just have, we really formed a really close bond with them. But I've always worried because of uh, the things that I've witnessed in the spirit world about these paranormal investigations. But I've, I've noticed that that's also a limiting belief about the power I hold now. So I am going into uh so we're going to the washura county jail then this is where if anybody is familiar with serial killers this is where ed gein was housed and he is uh one of the most oddly prolific in you know especially in wisconsin serial killer serial killer history so i'm um, just really excited about uh just being able to kind of test these skills out within that domain and just kind of see what pops up so is this known for having poltergeists? Not poltergeists, uh, just a lot of activity. You know, um, okay. there's just been a lot of activity shown. And once again, this isn't something I'm super familiar with myself. So, you know, I'm just really kind of going there to learn what they do and, and you know, show support for uh, Phantasm Paranormal. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you some advice. <laughs> I love um, your advice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so we like to test ourselves when we're doing this stuff, but, uh, I'm going to tell you that I know someone who does clearings for on, on the regular has been trained by two different native American shamans and he will not go any place that has a poltergeist. Okay. Uh, he will clear this places that have a poltergeist, but he won't do it while on site. Mm -hmm. And that's because he's had ghosts try to kill him before. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to a electrical substation that was haunted and they tried to drop a high tension wire on him. And that was the last time he went to a space with a poltergeist. So, you know, fair warning on poltergeist. So I'm glad to hear that there's no poltergeists on site because yeah, you, you know, you can be as spiritually powerful as you want but if it does something to you physically, that that's still gonna fuck you up, right? So you know, not your best call for that. So it it's it's been interesting. So uh, working with this group in particular, and I really feel that the reason that they were led to me is because all of them were getting chewed on by some pretty gnarly, you know, some gnarly shit um, that they had picked up through yeah. doing these paranormal investigations for out throughout the year. And one of the things that really shocked me is I was like, so what, what do you guys use for protections before you go in? They're like, oh, we, we can't do that because, that, you know, it'll eliminate any activity. I was like, well, have you tried it? And they're like, no. So I'm going in, you know, with all of the protections that I've learned and some that I've created along the way. Because, like I say in all the episodes, I treat my life as a social experiment. And I've treated it enough as a social experiment without protections that I'm going to see what happens when I go in with the proper protections. So, um, it's yeah. just, yeah, so, so it's. Yeah, I mean, having protections on yourself will not prevent paranormal activity. If you try to put protections on the property, then that can, that can uh, limit par paranormal activity. That's the whole point of protections on a property is to limit paranormal activity. So... Uh, yeah, I think they're misinformed on that one. Um, it seems to be a really but, common yeah. thread throughout the uh, paranormal community that they, you know, and I was like, I don't know who said that uh, or why everybody believes that, but, uh, you know, like, I really recommend trying the other way first. You know, I, I, I see so many people come into our private practice that are just really, really getting roughed up by some pretty, pretty heavy, heavy energy. Um, so, you yeah. know, I've. Yeah, and, and that's a big deal. You know, and, and I, yeah, 
I have had great shields up for many, many years, and I still talk to things on the other side. There's no limit to the paranormal connection that I have, even though I am fully shielded and warded and, you know, whatever, right? So um, I, I think that's a whole lot of hooey. So somebody screwed him over. You know, I, and I've, and I've listened to a lot of... was possessed by a demon, honestly. Yeah. I, and I've listened to your episode on, uh, what was it, the Civil War? You know, uh, the paranormal activity with the, around the Civil War um, battle oh, site. The, in <laughs> Richmond? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm always hesitantly cautious, yet mildly adventurous in life. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to a lot of haunted houses, and I talk just fine to them, and I'm totally protected when I do it. So, yeah. Definitely, I, I don't know who said that in the paranormal community, but they were actually setting people up to get chewed on. So, uh, yeah. So, okay. So you're going to go in. Are you helping them to get get shielded and protected before they We've go worked in, on that. You just... We've worked okay. on that in our group. Um, I don't believe that they've uh, fully actually invested in the fact that, you know, you can use shields and you know, not disturb the paranormal activity. So I'm going to go in because I'm going in with protections regardless. Cause you know, being a light in the room, I I'm, I'm all good on being a, you know, a Pac-Man dot in there. I'm, I'm happy to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to go in so, with my protections yeah, and, and community. Interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting because it is possible that somebody had set up a shield that made them appear shadowy on the astral so that they didn't get, uh, they didn't attract things and that that but that wouldn't limit that wouldn't limit the activity in the space it would limit the number of things to try and talk to them mm. so that might have been a specific type of shield that a medium put up way back when and found that it didn't really work so well because the things didn't talk to her because you know there's that right um, but yeah I they, there's <laughs> <laughs> you and I, we're bright entities, and people, you know, the entities are going to see us. And, you know, our shields are not designed to make us invisible. Our shields are designed to protect us, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, you could use your shield to be invisible, but why? Right. If you're invisible to the astral, you'll, you'll start to be invisible to the physical, too, at some point. And that is not really the goal, because you actually want people to notice you exist. It's a little thing. So... And I got to tell you, this is really a, a group of bright and shinies. Uh, they're just, just an amazing group of extremely talented individuals that are really coming into their gifts right now and have been for a while. And that's why they've been getting chewed on so hard. You know, the amount of activity that pops up around them, you know, in contrast to all the other groups in the area, you know, like all the other groups come to work with them because of all these things. And, you know, we've helped been able to shine a little light on exactly why that is uh, throughout throughout the uh coaching process so yeah so you know here here we are you're going to go to this paranormal investigation and so you're going to go in fully shielded and what are you going to do for when you're sleeping because you're going to fall asleep at some point probably overnight or are you Maybe. just planning to stay up all I, you know, I don't know yet. Um, I'm planning on resting pretty heavily throughout the day today. And uh, just, mm -hmm. I really want to just be a part of what their process is. So if they end up going all night, I'm going to do my best to also go all night. Uh, but I won't be, I won't be sleeping there, if that's what you're hinting at. Uh, you know, my... Yeah, my, that's my, that's what um, I'm saying is that I, I'm feeling like um, that there may be a time when you are uh, not fully awake. And so what I'm going to say is bring with you a pop-up circle that is held by something like a crystal or something mm -hmm. so that you can pop it up and be in it if you get that tired so that, yeah, you know, set that in the, in the crystal so that it's, it's held while you're sleeping because you do not want to be asleep in this place. So yeah, okay. no, I'm I'm aware of yeah. that. I get chewed on enough in my dreams still, so that's fun. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, yeah, but we'll we'll look forward to hearing how it went on the next episode. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs>
Yeah, either that or I'll be saying, well, Josh is missing now. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. You. Josh got institutionalized. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So, I don't know. We're going to cancel that. But you're, you'll be fine. I will so, be fine. Okay. You will be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, let's get on to our topic for the day, which is kind of related. I mean, you know, grimoires, right? So a grimoire is nothing more than a book of shadows or a book of rights. It's a, it's a uh, well, it's a little bit more than that. It's, it's magical knowledge in written form, right? And we're going to talk about grimoires and sort of the, the um, mythology around holy books uh, and whether or not they have protective qualities and things like that. So we're going to talk about that today. And um, so let's talk about a grimoire first, because that's the one that's most like woo-woo and yummy, right? Um, the, this question uh, came in from one of our listeners, Daph and Pino, and, uh, and she asked if grimoires could be set to bite the person who opens them. And the answer is yes. Yes, they can. Um, the... And, and they often are, honestly. Uh, I actually, one of our neighbors across the street from us in Richmond, just before we moved, had bought a 17th century grimoire. And uh, I, I think it was 17th century. Uh, and he had it in his house and he opened it and it bit him. And he couldn't get the thing gone. And he finally had to give up the grimoire and get rid of it to, to get rid of the thing that was biting him. And so, yeah, they can bite you. And you need to have proper protections up and you need to, you know, unlock them carefully, both on the magical level and on the physical level. So um, to set a biting <laughs> on your grimoire. So I so let me just start with this. I highly recommend that everybody who does any sort of energy work at all have a grimoire or a, we call it a book of rights in our work. Uh, and basically it's where you write down all your magical knowledge and all the things that you have done magically to support your life uh, or to do something for somebody else. And the reason you write these things down is because you will forget what you have done. And sometimes the forgetting what you've done is, you know, 20 years later, uh, somebody will come up to you and say, oh my God, you did these amazing you know, meditations and you know could you you should do those again on the podcast and uh, which somebody actually said to me a student of mine from 20 years ago actually said that to me and I'm like I did what and she's like this meditation about this and this and I'm like I have zero memory of that it was 25 years ago she's like oh my god it was so impactful to me I'm like well if you get a chance to write down what you remember that would be great because I have no freaking clue what you're talking about <laughs> and so uh, you know, sometimes you'd like to go back to your grimoires from 25 years ago and be like, oh, this thing was so impactful that 25 years later, somebody's still using it. Let me go look it up, right? Um, and the other side of the coin is sometimes you do a working on yourself and it has unintended consequences because of the language that you use to do the working. And, and that can be problematic. Oh, fuck Yep, just lost power. All right.
Okay, I can hear ya. I just waiting for the upload. We had a brown out. Power went out. Oh, this is gonna be painful. I'm using Jeff's uh, Wi-Fi hotspot on his phone, and I'm at five percent upload. This is gonna suck. So, um, yeah, your video is shot. Is it? There are many blurs. Yeah. Unless you're doing some really cool stuff that in magic you haven't taught me yet, I, I, you're fading out. Yeah. No. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Cluster. All right, so the Wi Fi is back up. I'm going to switch over to the Wi Fi because this is. Cool. cluster so the last thing I the last thing I heard before you cut out was uh, sometimes you do a working on yourself and it has unintended consequences is it gonna boot her again Okay, I'm back. Okay. That's great. Jeff, you can have your phone back. Okay. So the last thing that we heard was sometimes you have unintended consequences, right? Yeah, the, so the very last thing, uh, sometimes you do a working on yourself and it has unintended consequences because of the language you use. Right. Okay. Pick it up there. Jazz hands. Kelly, high five. Air high five. Jazz hands. We're getting through this. Everybody's happy. Ah! Ah! <laughs> All right. So sometimes you have unintended cons consequences. Yeah, because sometimes the way that you... Sometimes the way that you write your, your, your wording for your manifestation or the way that you say it out loud when you say it, uh, you know, a lot of times... When you go back and look at it, you go, oh, shit. <laughs> right? Because you're like, oh, I got exactly what I <laughs> asked of, for. Uh, it's just the words meant something different. And in English, the words mean, we have words that mean multiple things all the time, right? So this is one of the reasons why I really, really recommend writing this stuff down. Because you will find that you're like, oh, I, you know, like I did a manifestation of, uh, 25 years ago to try and bring in my partner and I wrote out all this stuff that I wanted and one of the things that I wrote on the list was a, the same spiritual path as mine or a parallel one not realizing that the word parallel would not intersect and and I left out mm. a lot of things in my manifestation such as common values and common goals and so what I ended up with was a conservative Republican Catholic with political aspirations who wanted to get married and have kids. <laughs> he was perfect in every other way. <laughs> <laughs> he was everything else I asked for. <laughs> and I went oh, back and looked great. at it. 
Yeah, be uh, careful what you I, uh, ask yeah. for. You will surely get it. I yeah. that's so funny. And I, forgot to put, I uh, that would make I recently happy, had a, right? a journey. I forgot to put that. You know, because if I had done yeah. that, all of the rest of it would have gone away. <laughs> that, that's right? one of the key ones. Because we would have had the share goals, right? But no, I didn't do that either. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I've learned under your tutelage is the beauty is in the simplicity. Yes. <laughs> you know, the, the, the beauty is in the simplicity of, especially, you know, manifesting things or doing workings is, you know, when you create more complicated rights, uh, more shit yes. can and will go wrong. Yes. You want the least amount of stuff <laughs> so. for what you want to accomplish. That's what you want. The smallest amount yeah. you can possibly do because every line you put in that is an opportunity for things to go wildly wrong. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's its own entertainment. So now that this is the reason why you create your own grimoire. Okay. Now, <laughs> Let's talk about grimoires in terms of can you get them to bite people? Uh, because, you know, when you start writing down all of your stuff, especially if you're writing down workings you've done for yourself, if you have anyone in your life who is not supportive or is actively aggressive towards you, having them get hold of that grimoire gives them a lot of uh, power to be able to mess with you. Okay? And so you don't want to do that. So what that means, though, is that you need to have a bite to it, or you need to hide it well, one or the other. Um, and the bite is dependent upon what you want to happen. So uh, you can have pretty much anything happen. I mean, look at the, the, the curses that were done on the Egyptian tombs, right? They, those were death curses, which came in the form of, you know, ancient bacteria and things that killed people, right? Uh, but when you're thinking about your grimoire, you want to make, and again, this is a be careful what you ask for a thing, right? Because you put this thing <laughs> on your grimoire today, you have a kid three years from now, the kid gets into your grimoire and now it gets cursed because you didn't pay attention to where you left it because you weren't, you don't, you don't remember that you put a bite on it because you don't get bitten because that's part of the deal, Right. And yet, you know, you want to, you want to account for these things, right? Uh, and then, you know. So you should have a grimoire for yeah, your grimoire. Yeah, you know, but th this is the other piece, though. You go, <laughs> okay, well, I'll eliminate my family from that mix. Well, 20 years from now, your kid is grown and hates you for some reason and now wants to hurt you, but they are eliminated from being, um, you know, hurt by the grimoire because you put, you put a, you know, pass on that for them. And now they can get in and do that. So this is, this is, it, it's a whole clusterfuck. Okay. <laughs> so you, you know, when you're building stuff, it, this is one of the things that I, I excel at in my life so much so that, that, uh, most of contract law in this country or in the U S is, is, uh, about, what is the worst that could happen and anticipating that and then writing clauses for it. I am so good at that because I do magic, right? I am so good at that, that a friend of mine who's an attorney that I asked to review a contract that I wrote said, this would stand up in court. Would you like a job writing contracts? And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> but I'm really good at it because I do magic because I have, you know, because I've been hyper vigilant in my childhood, because I've always done the what's the worst that could happen thing. Magic is particularly helped by the what could the what is the worst that could happen mentality, because you want to sit and think about what you're going to call into being before you do it so that you don't accidentally do something that's the worst that could happen. Right. So uh, when we're talking about setting up a grimoire, Rather than setting specific, you know, pullbacks on it, you may want to instead say only people who have positive intent towards me can open this book without consequences. And once opened, because here's another what's the worst that could happen is that the person could know that, get somebody who likes me to open the book and then pass it over to them. So... And once opened, the book is still active for its spells for anyone who touches it or reads it 
who is not who does not have positive intent towards me right so this this is why you have to sort of think through what is the worst that could happen right so oh they could trick somebody else into opening the book okay well i'm going to account for that in my spell work right oh they could read over the other person's shoulder i'm going to account for that in my spell work they could get a photocopy of it i'm going to account for that in my spell work right so you know this is the you have to think about all the possibilities of how they're going to get around it in order for you to protect it and so that's the uh that's the piece that you have to keep in mind as you're going through the process of protecting something like this because you know anytime you so this is again going back to the idea of magical crutches and things like that and I'm, I can hear people saying, well, what if I keep it on my computer? Okay. Now you have to deal with all of the electronic <laughs> things and hackers and all of the possibilities and the potential for your hard drive to get wiped and you lose it all, right? Um, so, you know, all of these pieces and, or get corrupted on a, on a bad sector. It gets saved on a bad sector on your hard drive and now it's corrupted. Now what? Is the magic corrupted too, right? I don't know. Is it? So this is why grimoires are usually kept in physical form. <laughs> also because they're not as easily copied. Because you can make infinite copies of a, of a file. And, you know, does it d dilute the magic? Maybe. If you made a lot of them, might. Depends on how you built the magic, right? <laughs> so would, would you consider the three keys of Solomon... Uh, a grim war because that, that was one of the first ones that i picked up and it was about three years ago and it was funny because i was like i don't know if i should buy this and i read an amazon review it's like bought the book opened the book had had messed up dreams put the book in the garage never opened it again so i was like i'm gonna buy this book because you know because me social experiment that's right like, that's yes. what i do um but would you consider the three <laughs> I, I actually really regular. I use that book quite often now. Um, that one has really come in handy with some of uh, the deeper level. Work I have been not doing, so. read that. So um, tell me a little bit about what's in it so that I can answer your question. Well, so it really goes into a lot of stuff, hexes, curses, um, how yeah, to set them up, more. you know, uh, 72, you know, the 72 demons. Yeah. You know, um, and Solomon's take on it. And so it was also rewritten by Mathers okay. and Crowley um, in the late 1800s, yeah. early 1900s. Almost so, certainly Crowley's um, edition is absolutely yeah. a grimoire because he's, that's who he was. But uh, the... <laughs> Yeah, I, if it's all of those things, that definitely is a grimoire. If it's anything that teaches you how to do magic, you know, if it's got rituals in it and things like that, it is a grimoire. So, um, and yeah, it could have a curse gotcha. attached to it for every every copy that is is uh, printed and all of that because they, you know, that could be there, right? It's so anything, so the, if you do it, if if it's attached to the writings of the book and not the book itself, then every copy that's ever made will be a function of it, right? So, yeah. Happy joy. Sweet. I am so happy with, all, yeah, it's all very exciting stuff between the paranormal investigation and knowing that I may have a cursed <laughs> Crowley book in my house. Well, <laughs> this has all been <laughs> very lovely what stuff Crowley to think intended. about. For, yeah, for what it's it worth, though. It depends on what Crowley intended for the book. He may or oh. may not have put a curse on it. Uh, if he intended it to be used for his students, then it may not be cursed, right? It may not have a protection on it. So, Or it might have something very specific to if you're one of my students, right? If you And, and if you study Crowley, then you are technically one of his students, and therefore you'd be fine, right? So it just depends. But, yeah. And and then he wouldn't want you to no, do what he says to do anyway. From hell, <laughs> if right? you're really one of his students, yeah, so it's all about break, break the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, do, do your all the rules. Yeah, he wasn't even Picasso. I mean, I guess he did take the time to learn some of the rules, but he really didn't give you know too much credence to much of the rules. I think he worked from them and the just best, just went with whatever he felt like doing. The ones who learn the rules first, so that they understand why they exist, and then they break them with intelligence, right? 
It's like, okay, so this one's here to protect people who yeah. don't know any better. I know better. I'm breaking it, right? You know, that sort of thing. So I, I, my impression of Curly is that he's yeah. that, that sort, right? So, yeah, grimoires are... Yeah, they're He's their an interesting own thing. One. Um, and the uh, <laughs> the thing that you want to pay attention to with a grimoire, if if you get somebody else's grimoire, so let's say you're buying an ancient grimoire, you need to sit down and meditate with that grimoire and your guides. Do not try and energetically infiltrate that grimoire until you talk to your guides, <laughs> because you don't know what's set to break on that thing, and then. It's so a grimoire needs to be opened f for the first time by you in what is equi the equivalent of an air gapped computer space, right? So I imagine that you're you're opening a unknown thumb drive onto a computer. You're gonna use an air gapped computer, something where the the limitation of the damage will be to the the. The computer itself, which means that when you open a grimoire, you're going to want to do that in a, you're going to want to be in protected space yourself. You're going to want to put the grimoire itself in a protection outside of you. And then you're going to want to open it with something that goes through the grimoire, through the outside circle around the grimoire, but does not put your hand inside it and flip that fucker open to see what happens because you want it, you want it to be really, really protected because you don't know what you're going to set off. And so, you know, having positive intent, you know, uh, being, not being greedy about the knowledge, not being power hungry about the knowledge, being willing to be, you know, be with it or whatever that those can help. But, you know, eventually you're going to set that, that, that sucker off eventually, probably. Uh, because if they know anything about magic, they've done the things that I just talked about. <laughs> you know, they're just like, ah, right? So <laughs> you might as well set it off in the beginning and see what happens and then uh, be able to unwind it. So uh, to open a grimoire that is protected in that fashion, you're going to want to create that inner space that is protected around the book itself. And then make sure that the way you've set the circle, when you stick the thing through it, that's going to open the book, that it's not breaking the circle, you know? So you don't want to use something that's iron because iron is by definition going to break the circle. That's just the nature of the beast. Uh, and so you want to make sure it doesn't have salt on it for the same reason and all the things, right? So you want to, you want a cheap ass metal or wood, um, stick, a chopstick would be a great thing for this, right? Just a basic chopstick. Um, and then you just open it up and, and your circle that's around the book should be set to absorb whatever energy comes out and to absorb the, the curse itself that, because once you trigger the protection, then the, the protection is active and seeable by the energetic and so you can grab onto it, suck the energy from it, and suck the protection out at the same time if your circle is set properly to do that. And that should, should, <laughs> assuming there's only one, uh, be, <laughs> be the thing that helps. I would flip a second page and, or go to the middle of the book or go to the end of the book or, you know, there, there may be things that are specifically keyed to specific pages too. So you never know what you're going to get. So, you know, might want to go through page by page and see what shows up because we don't know how it's, how it's oriented. And there may be also something that's set for human touch on the cover. And so even if you do all of this, yeah. You were reading my mind just this, now. That could be problematic still. <laughs> so, uh, you know, basically what I'm saying is magic is dangerous and this particular type of magic is more dangerous than most because people are protecting the information and you know you don't know what kind of thing is on it so it could be something as simple as you know you you lose the ability to re read the book sometimes that's the case where you'll just look at the pages and your brain just won't compute what's on them and we've all had that experience from time to time. So that's a state that our brains go into. 
uh, especially if, we, if it's above our ability to comprehend uh, or outside of our sphere of influence, as Kathy likes to put it, uh, or assimilation, rather, outside of our sphere of assimilation. And uh, so, you know, we've all had that experience. So it would be a very easy thing for somebody to trigger that. And you would stare at the book and stare at the book and stare at the book and not, not be able to comprehend it. And so that's, that's a non-aggressive form of protecting your grimoire, right? Is to make it unintelligible to the person who's reading it. Uh, you know, there, there are lots of ways to do it. I mean, everything from something as benign as that to I'm going to strip you of your psychic powers, right? You know, or I'm going to kill you like the Egyptians were doing, <laughs> right? Uh, so, you know, your mileage may vary and your grimoire may, may be anywhere on that spectrum. So, um, yeah, the, I don't recommend that you... There's a reason why this is our advanced level part of the program and that why I have talked about this for six years. I was just... I was thinking if you're a beginner That's student... Awesome. I was just thinking, if you're a beginner student that ha happened out of go back to go back yeah, to episode yeah. one. If you're an intermediate <laughs> student, go back. And, you know, don't don't fuck about with this. Grimoires are, are hardcore, uh, and you know other people's grimoires are hardcore. Do your own, absolutely do your own, uh, but be very careful about protecting it. Um, the most benign one would be the one I was just talking about. With you know, it's unintelligible. People can't read it. Uh, that would be the the least ab offensive, least you know uh, abusive form. But you got to make sure you limit what you're saying to. They can't read this grimoire, not they can't read, because that could be that that's an unintended consequence that could go horribly wrong, right? Because then now they can't read anything, and so that's that's problematic. Okay, so. And this, it, it, it's a scrambling of the brain, right? It's a scrambling of the energy field of the brain, not the brain itself, <laughs> but yeah. All right, let's talk about holy books because we're, we're getting pretty far into this episode. I want to make sure we get that covered. Uh, mm -hmm. So holy books, you know, people say, oh, well, these books have properties of protection and things like that. And the answer is kind of, okay? So... Any holy book that has been revered for a long period of time, so the Torah, the Quran, the Bible, you know, these, these books, have a morphic field unto themselves. That is the morphic field of the, the teachings within the book. And so when someone holds the book up, as a protection against something coming at them, it isn't the book itself that is the protective energy. It is the faith of the person who is holding the book tapped into the morphic field of all the people who believe in the book that creates the protection of the book. So the, the short answer is you don't need the freaking book. So if you feel like you need a protection, just invoke the energy of the book. Just be like, Bible, or Torah, or Quran, and be like, right? And that, and just see it huge in front of you. <laughs> and it will be this massive thing that stands between you and whatever is coming at you, right? <laughs> because you've got the faith of all the people who believe in that book supporting your belief that it defends you. Now, if you do not believe or you question whether or not it will protect you, then it probably won't. Because the book was not written, none of those books were written with the intent of being protective. Okay, just like a cross, uh, you know, the, the, the crucifixion cross uh, was not designed to be a protective element. But because so many people believe that it is, if you believe that it is, you can tap into that energy. Um, the the original, you know, the the equi, equi sized cross, the plus sign, right? Um, that one was mm -hmm. more more protective in nature. 
um, you know, the crisscross, we're going to protect, right? When you turn it sideways, it's an X, right? Uh, that was more designed with it, and so it has more inherent properties like that. Uh, but because people have treated the cross itself as okay. a protection, that has become part of the morphic field of it. And so your belief taps into the belief of the people who hold the cross up as protection, whatever. But if you don't believe in, if you're not a Christian, if you don't believe in Christianity, that cross is not going to do anything for you because you have to invoke the morphic field through your belief in it. And so that's how you tap into it. So, yeah, fun stuff t today, right? <laughs> very, yeah, this is a very deep episode covering a lot of, a lot of ground and a lot of, you know, some, you know, like there is some real consideration to take in when you're, when they're doing this type of magic, you know, and that's why, you know, a lot of the students we, we work with are the, the people with the backup plans to the backup plans because they've been running algorithms of all the possible scenarios right. for a long period of time. And that's what really breeds yes. a, a great magician or yeah, uh, somebody who's absolutely. great with magic. So. so, you know, in short, Kellyism for the day, uh, be careful what you wish for and be careful what you touch because both of them can kick you in the ass. <laughs> that's your short answer. <laughs> all right well uh that's all we have time for this week folks time to tune in next week to let kelly guide you through energy magic and the spirit world i'm joshua ratto and your co-host and i'm here with kelly sparta so Keep long y'all spirit sherpa bye muff the end of that <laughs> Yes, I did. <laughs>